Hi, my name's Lee Kennedy and I'm an Enterprise Architect with Click. Today we're going to look at building context-aware applications for ClickSense Enterprise SaaS. This video is a follow-on from my prior video covering systems development life cycles around ClickSense Enterprise SaaS, so you might want to watch that first, where I cover the concepts used here. In a model where we have a single development, test and production space, similar to what we showed in the previous video, it's easy to use relative connections in those spaces to ensure we always use the appropriate data connection based on the SDLC stage. But what if you have separate dev, test and prod environments for different departments? For example, sales dev or HR prod. There's no out of the box mechanism to handle this. However, if we add some logic to our click scripts, and with the help of Clicks APIs, we can do this ourselves. So what do I need to know for my app to know its context? Well, you need to know the app's unique ID, its app ID. Once you've got the app ID, you can look up which space the app resides in. And when you've got the space, by, by using naming conventions around your spaces, then you can determine the purpose of that space. For example, it's sales dev or HR test. So how does an app know its app ID? Well, it isn't obvious at first. There's a built-in function document name, and in SAS that will return the app ID, uh, which will be a GUID, as you can see here. Yeah. Once we've got that GUID, we can, we can look up details about that application. Now, there isn't a built-in function to do that. So what we do is create a REST connection to your tenant's APIs and interrogate your tenant that way. So basically, I, I'm connecting to the app's endpoint and passing my app ID. Then I'll, then I'll query that REST endpoint and I'll receive the data back. Uh, that data comes back in the form of a table which we can then use peak to get the value out of that table. So now we've got our space ID. We will move on to find out what the space name is. So again, we want to use the REST connection to connect to the APIs for our tenant. And this time we're going to use the spaces endpoint and pass the space ID. Again, it will return us a table uh, via the, the REST connection. And using the information at table, we can get the space name. We can also get other information like the space type, for example, whether it's a managed type and the description of the space if you want to use that for other things. But for what we're doing now, the space name is what we need. So how can we use this? So as I mentioned, we need to use naming conventions. So we've got the space name and the naming convention we decided, which we saw earlier, is to use an underscore between the two parts of the name. So the name we, for example, had before was say sales dev. So we use subfield then to grab that, those parts of the name. So the first part we're going to call business area, which will be sales. So we use subfield to get the first part of the name. And the second part we're going to call tier. Is we use subfield again. So we've basically broken up sales underscore dev into sales and dev. We can then use logic, such an if statement, to determine what we don't want to do. So here, if we determine business area sales, we're going to set a business area connection to point to the sales data files. And the logic we would handle other things like HR or finance, for example. Then we would look at the tier. So then we determine if it's dev, test or prod. If it's dev, we're going to set a connection to the development data files here. Uh, we've been able to set this specially and, and use this for our application in a way that is very flexible. Now, I've used the naming convention around an underscore. You can do whatever works for you. Uh, but the idea is here, we've actually been able to understand from our app purely on, based on the space it's in, what connections it could use for different purposes. And here's the output of that bit of code. Uh, so we can determine it's a sales space and a dev space. We've set the, the connections to sales data files and development data files. Now, another thing we can do using this logic 
is if we've got scripts, uh, say a library of, of different script functions we like to bring in to, our, to use in our apps, we may have a different version defined for dev, test, and prod. So here we're looking if it's any of the dev spaces, we are going to pull in version 1.2. Test is using 1.1 and prod is using 1.0. Now, over time, we would change that. So as we release new versions of our script, apps will automatically pick up the right version based on where they are. I hope this video is useful to you. This video does cover some complex concepts, and it's probably beneficial for you to read a document on it and get some more examples. I've released a document to community called Managing Your Analytics Lifecycle in QuickSense Enterprise SaaS. And if you reference that, you'll be able to get some code samples of doing these things and play around with them yourself. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.